and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about the process of building up a project view database collection. So it's going to cover the full process of going from our world of observation to what we are trying to describe in our project to how it is described in our project. This is a overview or conceptual video, so I won't be doing any GIS QGIS things here. I'll be talking about the process and specifying how it's done and what to consider and also introducing a lot of terminology that we'll be using in later videos. Basically, any geospatial project or any database data modeling project starts out of a world of observation. So that is what we want to describe, what we want to model. It's what aspects of it and what how it is delimited in time and space. When this world of this course, or sorry, the world of observation, you know, there's lots of phenomena. So they are bus stops, waiting time, train stations, all those different phenomena that we can sense. So that is what we want to map. But whenever we do this, we'll do it through some lens of purpose. So any project has a purpose, even if the purpose is to do some data exploration of a data set, then that is the purpose. So you always have a purpose and we'll always be looking at our world of observation through that purpose that it decides which phenomena are included and how they are represented. It's also a question about a priori knowledge. So what do we know in general about our projects? Which experiences have do we have? Do we all come to a problem with a different background? And that will influence how we work. Our when we look at our phenomena through our lens of purpose and knowledge, we get what we call a world of discourse or ontology or conceptual data model or just data model. Depending on which subject you come from, it will be called something different. But basically, it is how we want to talk about our world of observation. So what aspects do we include? How do we distinguish between types of buildings? Do we distinguish between different types of buildings? Do they say here's a building? Do they say this is a public building, a private building, and whatever. So all of these things are influenced by our lens of purpose and knowledge. So that is our world of discourse or ontology or data model. Important is that whenever we do work of any seriosity or complexity, we need to document what we do. So first thing we'll do is that we document our world of discourse. And we'll say, okay, what is, how have we decided to look at our world of observation? In uh, the description, I link to a template I normally use for doing this. What makes GIS working with geospatial data such a success is that other projects have been there before us. They've probably worked with some of the same phenomena that we're going to work with. And hopefully they have also written project documentations so we can see how their world of discourse was of those phenomena. And based on that world of discourse, they have hopefully also created some data that we can access. So remember, whenever you access someone's data, it is their interpretation of the world of observation. It's seen through their lens of purpose 
and a priori knowledge. It is their world of discourse that has generated the data. Sometimes that aligns with ours. That's the case. We can basically take their data, might have to do some simple filterings, transformation, modifying the data in small parts, but basically we can take their existing data and put it into our project. If we if our world of discourse aligns with the world of discourse in that project, so we'll often have to go in and read their project data. It's not always obvious what a building is. Is a houseboat a building? Can there be forests throughout trees? And lots of other aspects you have to consider. So be careful about just pulling in existing data because their ontology or world of discourse can be completely different from yours and therefore the data will be incompatible. Alas, sometimes data does not already exist and we have to do our own data collection. So for those phenomena that are not mapped or used in our projects, we will need to do our own data collection. And just like with our other projects, we need to document how we've done our data collection. Uh, so lots of things. What is the so-called minimum mapping unit? So what is the smallest thing we can see? I mean, that we can't work with everything in this world. So there's lots of important information that you have to write down your document. And then you can create your own project data and then you can share that with other people. So this is the basic process all the videos about how we create this world of discourse, how we document it and how we represent do our data collection and how we import data. All of these linked in the description. So this is just this short setting the scene for a new type of work where we combine our people's data with our people, our data, but being aware that there can be discrepancies between our world of discourse and their world of discourse. So hope you like this overview video. Hope to see you in some of the more detailed videos where we look at the individual steps of this process. Bye.